My name is Carly, and we're live at Johnsonville headquarters in Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin, for our smoking and grilling live stream. I'm joined today by some special Johnsonville members who are going to take us inside the world of smoking meat. We've also got a couple of members here who are going to be taste testing Johnsonville products hot off the smoker. So if you're brand new to the meat smoking scene, or perhaps you're looking for a couple tips and tricks, we've got you covered today because our expert pit master is going through medium, intermediate, and expert level smoking methods, in addition to some smoking equipment, products you can try in your smoker, and we're even gonna test out some recipes. Uh, if you have questions throughout the course of this broadcast, please type them in the comment section below because we wanna get those in front of Jem. Without further ado, let's meet him. How you doing, Jim? Hi, Carly, very good. I, I, that's great to hear. Um, tell us what you do here at Johnsonville and how you got started smoking meat. Sure, I'm a product data specialist. Okay. And was starting with smoking meat, actually adding smoke flavor to meat. So I, I had steak with a, a grill, kettle grill similar to this, um, put chips on it and put steak on, grilled it, and it added that flavor. And from there on, I was hooked. Awesome, I love that. And you also do some barbecue competitions, correct? Right, yep. Uh, another, our members from this, uh, from a com our company, um, we got together, we did three competitions in 2016. And we did, the biggest one we did was at Lambeau Field. And there was 82 Exciting. teams that were there. No pressure. Um, yep, no, <laughs> no. Um, but it was the first, uh, first year doing it. Uh, we we're going against people that are almost professional at doing this. Okay. So big rigs and um, yeah, we, we had our equipment we, we used. So you're like semi-pro working your way up, right? Absolutely. Love yep. that. Yep. Learning awesome. every day. Learning every day. Yep. And there's a couple Johnsville members here you mentioned that yep. who do this with you. Yep. Uh, Travis Selby and Jason Foss. Wonderful. Yep. Great. Well, I see that we've got three smokers set out here. This is probably the best place to start if this is the first time you've ever done anything with smoking or looking to, to get into the trade, correct? Right. And a lot of people already have a kettle grill. So it's just yeah, a matter of... Yeah, it looks of, pretty familiar. I've yep. seen one in my backyard. Yep. And <laughs> add, add a couple of different pieces of equipment and you can start smoking. Awesome. That's, that's the way I started um, by, you know, getting the uh, some charcoal rails, charcoal behind that, adding wood chips to it. And then at that point, I put a, a Boston pork butt roast on there. And uh, then uh, it was a matter of feeding the fire and putting the chips on. And that's where I first started learning. Wonderful. And, and so and we've got wood chips and charcoal inside of here. Exactly. Well, yep. let's lift up the hood and okay. see what's inside. So we've got a couple different uh, levels of doneness on the, on the sausage that's on here. And what products do we have here? Got original brought out front, and we've got it some more breakfast sausages in the back. Excellent. Yeah, we can tell these ones have been on here. That color is phenomenal. I've never seen our sausage look that gorgeous before. Yeah. I mean, I have, but this is like, this is another level. Yep, yep. that mahogany color is what you're looking for. That's awesome. the smoke going in. So it. sausage is for smoking, too. It is, absolutely. Perfect. absolutely. And what's going on beneath the grill grate? So the grill grate, we've got the, the smoking box that's on the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's holding the chips. Underneath that is the charcoal briquettes. Okay. That, that's your heat source. And then the, the uh, chips are what add the smoke flavor into the meat and into the grill. Oh, wonderful. So we've got it set up with the, uh, the, ch the charcoal and the chips on this side, the meat in the middle, and then the vent on the back side. And it flows, the smoke goes from here over the meat and out the back side. Excellent. Kind of so that's a tip. You got to make sure you put your smoke box on one side of the smoker and that the vent is on the other so the smoke's getting pulled across, right across. the meat. Absolutely. Yep. Love that. Fantastic. Now, what if I don't have a smoke box at home? You can do just start just like I did. Aluminum foil, maybe double up aluminum foil, chips soaked in water, put it in there, wrap it up in a packet, a couple of poke holes in there. Drop it on the coals. Excellent. Another something. tip, aluminum foil packet, throw your wood chips in there and uh, or charcoal and you're good to go. Absolutely. Yep. Excellent. Um, well, let's get um, I, the breakfast sausage in here. You, uh, an offline conversation we had, there's a Johnsonville member here right. who actually kind of, I don't want to say started it, but gave the idea to throw, throw breakfast sausage on the smoker. Yep, I saw it on Facebook and I liked it and we had a conversation about it and I mentioned it to you and he, he came, he's coming in today. Excellent. Yeah. Well, we have him here. Yeah. So, Sean, why don't you come on over and join us? Hey. Morning, guys. Morning, Facebook. How's everybody doing today? Morning, Sean. Yeah. It, smells like, it smells like fun over <laughs> it here. It smells right? phenomenal. I wish you guys could <sighs> smell what we're smelling because it's. I'm hungry. I've been hungry for a while. Absolutely. All right. So, this is Sean Angle. Sean, why don't you tell us what you do here at Johnsonville? Uh, I'm an engineering technician. Excellent. And before we jump into the breakfast sausage, this hat up here, I got to point it out. 
You can't spell sausage without USA. Sean is a Johnsonville member who actually came up with that slogan. And we've had it plastered across our entire marketing campaign this summer, so we are in debt to you. Thank uh, you. No, my pleasure, my pleasure. That brain's been working hard. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's rough. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell us what inspired you to put breakfast sausage on a smoker? Well, uh, Jim mentioned barbecue competitions. Uh, I've had the opportunity to do two of them this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, with that comes a lot of practice. So you're up early in the morning, you're throwing your meat on, getting everything ready. It's breakfast time, so I just I had some Johnsonville breakfast sausage in my in my fridge. Threw those on for about an hour and. They're, they're ready to go for breakfast. Awesome, and what's the flavor of those like? Because it's gotta be pretty different than using the oven or the stove. Absolutely, absolutely. The low and slow method really locks in the juices and gives that, that casing a nice snap when you bite into it. it I, I feel it's far superior than, than frying it in the pan. I love it. Well, it's kind of like a cook once, cook twice method since we've got both dinner sausage and breakfast sausage on here. You can take care of meals for the entire week. Yep, Can't absolutely. beat that. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks All for right. joining us, Sean. Why don't All you right. head over to the crowd? We'll feed you later. Sounds good, guys. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Now, since we've got our smoker closed, can you talk to me about this vent right here? Yep. And for the top vent, I like to keep it wide open. Okay. And then control the bottom with the, the, the vents to control the temperature and the amount of oxygen going in to feed the fire to control the temperature. That makes a ton of sense. So, yeah, we make sure that our vent is open and our smoke box is on the other side. Lovely. And for, for sausage, um, I like to uh, keep the temperature try between uh, 225 and 250. For sausage. For, for sausage. 225 and 250, 250. Yep. is what our smokers saw at. Yep. Excellent. Well, we've got some awesome products on here that we want our taste testers to try. So we're going to pull over Cole. He's with us today. He's also got some excellent recipes for us to try coming off of each one of our smokers. So. Cole, why don't you tell us what you do here at Johnsonville? Oh, hi, Carly. I am um, <laughs> Cole. I work in our applications team, and I develop recipes that go on our website, and I work in a popular area in the kitchen. A lot of people want to come by and sample the stuff I make. So, so you're, you're absolutely I our culinary specialist. Yes, I am. Playing food all day, you can't be that. And you probably may recognize Cole. He's been in some Johnsonville commercials, so i nope. got another creative mind, which works well for us in the kitchen. So tell us so, what the recipe is that you've got here. It looks really good. So, so this is just a brat crostini. The recipe's on our website, and it would be great at a tailgate or when you're just having a party at home. Excellent. It's a crostini with our smoked brat on top, and then we put some parm on top of there, parmesan. And then we have our breakfast link that we pulled off of the grill earlier, and we're going to have our sample or our judges try that. Wonderful. And some ideas you could do with that is... Uh, chop it up the next day in the morning and add it to like a breakfast hash and put some eggs over the top. Keeping me hungry. So Great. I'll go give this to the judges. Yeah, Cole's gonna hand those over to our taste testers. Um, while they're doing that, I definitely wanna show you, this is the product again that we've got on our kettle smoker, the Johnsonville or Original Breakfast Links. And um, on each one of these smokers, we've got our original Johnsonville brats. And, um, Jim, it looks like you've got another tip for us. Let's talk about what's this piece of equipment. Right. While we're walking over, it's again, it's a basket for putting charcoal in. So you can load it up with charcoal. It'll double up as, as a, a rail. So you can use your water pan and put it up against there, and it'll keep them contained. Excellent. Yeah. And since this is a grill and a smoker, the grill grate that's in there, is there a dual purpose that we can use that for? Yep. Yeah. And on the end, these are hinged, so you can lift it up so you're able to add um, more chips or more charcoal as you need as you're doing going through the cook. And again, with some of those bigger pieces of meat, you're going to have to keep um, adding some of that fuel in to make it keep uh, smoking and cooking. Excellent. So another tip, use your grill grate to easily add more charcoal or wood chips to your smoker. Again, if you're just tuning in, we're at Johnsonville headquarters in Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin. I'm Carly. I'm here with Jim Chapman. He's our pitmaster specialist, and we are talking all about smoking. We're going to turn it right now to our taste testers who've just tried the Johnsonville breakfast sausage off of our kettle smoker. And they're also getting to taste that Brat Cristini, which is pretty great. Uh, we've got Austin, Steph, and Mark, all um, Johnsonville members here on our marketing team. How you guys doing? Great, Carly. Thank Great. you. Awesome. Excellent. You've got a hungry crowd behind you, so watch we this. We can play. Yeah, we're guarding it. We're guarding it. <laughs> Real jealous. Awesome. Well, why don't you, um, Austin, let's start with you. What do you think of the breakfast sausage? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think Sean really nailed it when he said, you know, he spoke about uh, about the, the snap of the casing. It's just... It's, it's got a, a hardness to it, but then the moisture in the middle of the, of the meat is just is excellent. I love it. I can taste it from here. Steph, what do you think? 
I think it's awesome. I've never had it smoked like this. Um, the really great difference in flavor and texture. Um, and the crostini, the combination of the ingredients there is amazing. I would have never thought to do it that way, but good work. Awesome. Mark, anything to add? Oh, that's, it's all very, it's very delicious, different flavor profile. It's, you know, the, the great flavor of a breakfast sausage, but kind of feels like you're camping a little bit. So it's a really nice, I and it might be because we're outside, but uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's very Giving good. Giving you those vibes a little bit. Great. <laughs> Well, we're gonna head on over to our second smoking method. Keep in mind, if you do have questions, we'd love to hear from you. So comment in the section below. We'll make sure we can get some of those to Jim before we're out. So, all right, Jim, this kind of looks like a cabinet. Yep, exactly, and that's the term we use for it. So it's a cabinet smoker. Um, it's different from the, the uh, kettle grill okay. or the offset. Um, this piece of equipment is specifically used for smoking. Um, that can be used dual purpose grill and for smoking. Mm -hmm. um, same as the other, but this one is a one trick pony. Purely a smoker. Smoker. I'm going to stop you right there. I'd love for you to tell us the difference between grilling and smoking. What's the, what's the most obvious? The most obvious is flavor. Okay. You're going to add smoke flavor to the meats. You're going to still cook them. If you don't add uh, wood chips or wood in, of some sort into one of these cookers, you just are pretty much using an oven. Got it. Yep. Good to know. All right, let's, uh, I, I see the propane here. Yep. Why don't you tell us about the function of the cabinet smoker. Yep. So the, it, this is a, a propane fired. Um, you can get electric also, mm -hmm. um, but propane is a little more uh, fast to recover um, when you open the door and do things. Um, control on the bottom, push to start. It's a set it, forget it type mm -hmm. of uh, piece of equipment, which is, is kind of nice for people that don't want to invest the time and the effort. But uh, and, and again, it's, but it's also a, a piece of equipment that you have to have that can only be used for one thing. Sure, yeah. little temperamental, so probably intermediate level, somebody who's had some experience smoking before. Yep, and, and keep adding wood to it to be able to keep smoking. Excellent. Well, let's open her up, see yep. what's inside. So what we've got on here is some- Ooh, uh, yep. flavor, yep. flavor. <laughs> so we've got some different sausages. In the middle, we've got our brat. We've got a, a queso brat, a cheddar brat, and a chorizo. Okay. Um, underneath is a couple of sausages that got on that we're putting on so mm -hmm. the crowd can have a little snack later sure, on. Sure, yeah, so we're and, varying degrees of smoking yeah. inside here. And we have our mac and cheese that's back on to be able to add some flavor. Oh yeah, we'll have Cole talk about this in a second. Yeah. That looks amazing. So this is set up with, on the bottom is the propane burner. Mm -hmm. On top of that is the wood chips that gets uh, start the smoke. Mm -hmm. On top of that is a water pan. And again, all of these are set up with a water pan to keep moisture inside and keep it from the product not drying out. Excellent. And so that steam's helping to also add some flavor into those. Correct. Is there, a, with all of the um, levels inside of this cabinet smoker, is there any method to where you place what products? Yep. And normally we would put uh, the, the uh, original brats in the top, mm -hmm. cheddar in the middle, and trezo on the bottom. We wouldn't want to have the trezo juices or anything coming off of that dropping down on the original brat because someone sure. that doesn't care for spicy would get a little bit of surprise. Awesome. So that's another great tip. If you're cooking with multiple flavors, you want to put the more flavorful, flavorful products on the bottom of your smoker so that way we're not blending in exactly. there. Yep. And then I think another great tip, since we've got this open still, we've got our entire meal that we're going to be feeding our taste testers in a second mm -hmm. and it's getting nice and smoky. So you can do that with a couple different food products, I'd imagine. Absolutely. Yep. You can put any, anything you really like to add smoke to, um, you can do that. Yeah, especially, and again, this is a cabinet that's designed for smoking. Okay. Yep. It it's also has more surface area than the uh, kettle grill, so you can do a lot more product th than you can on the, on the, on the kettle grill. Wonderful. Yep. Well, let's get Cole over here because sure. I definitely want to get some of these flavors in front of our taste testers. And here he is. All right. <laughs> What do we got going on right here, Cole? So here we have our grown-up mac and cheese. The recipe's on our website, and then instead of the sausage that that recipe calls for, I think it's the original brat on a grill, we have the smoked brat, which brings another dimension to the mac and cheese. I love it. And then in the back, we have our chorizo, our queso, and our cheddar brat. And we're going to give one link to each of the judges so they can comment on the different uh, flavors that the smoking brings to those links. Awesome. So this is like extra smoky mac and cheese because yes. we've yeah, taken we, it right outside of our smoker. In the, we put it in the smoker. It adds a little smoke flavor to the top that you mix in as you uh, Excellent. spoon it onto the bowl we'll or plate. Get that food over there. Again, I want to show you what products we're actually using on our smoker. We've got our chorizo sausage links. This is a fresh grilling link. Delicious if you haven't had an opportunity to try it. Our cheddar brats, again, really great, a staple here at Johnsonville. And then we've got a delicious limited time 
sausage. Um, this came out uh, a little earlier this year. I don't think it's on shelves anymore, but definitely find it next year. It's probably one of my favorites. Um, and Jim, I'd love for us to go over. I think we've got one more tip yep. here on this smoker while we're giving our taste testers a chance to move through some of those dishes we just sent over. Right, um, and this morning it was a little cooler. We didn't have to use this, but if you're in, in Wisconsin mm -hmm. later on in the year, um, some of these cabinets are, are more well insulated than others. Of course, that also the price point. Um, that if it gets more insulated, it gets heavier to move around, mm -hmm. but also it costs more. So Jason Foss and I came up with an idea of using a welding blanket. We can wrap it around, so clip it in place, and you'll have heat retention rather than losing that. You still have to move it out of the way to mm -hmm. open up and, and add chips, but it's a, it's a great way to contain the heat. And that's probably a great option if you're cooking a bigger piece of meat. Right, and, and again, the colder temperature. It was cool this morning, but not as cold as I've, I've smoked in the past. Yeah, yep. awesome. Yep. Well, again, I'm Carly. You're tuning in live to our grilling and smoking live stream here at Johnsonville headquarters. We're going to turn this over to our taste testers who've got chorizo, cheddar, and queso brats in front of them, fresh off our smoker. They're also tasting some smoky mac and cheese. Recipes and products are on our website, johnsonville.com. But I really want to hear from these guys. So, Mark, what's going on with that chorizo? Uh, the chorizo is fantastic. It's a little cold out here, so it's spicing me up nice. Um, not the one for embellishment, but this is the best mac and cheese I've ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you heard it here? <laughs> Great stuff. I think you've got the queso brat, yeah? I do. I have the queso brat, and it's got some pepper jack in it and an amazing flavor profile. Um, for an LTO, this is one of, the, this is one of my favorites. Um, the mac and cheese is absolutely the grown-up version, and I would have a hard time sharing that with my kids because it tastes amazing. <laughs> okay, fair, fair. And Austin, you're trying the cheddar brat. Yeah, I have the cheddar, and I, I usually grill this at home often. This is one of my go-tos, and um, it's, it's just very unique. It's very different. The smoky flavor with the cheddar, both in the brat and, and in the mac and cheese, just it's just a very different profile that you wouldn't have normally put together, and it's phenomenal. Wonderful. I love that. Well, we're going to move on through here. This looks like it's our last smoker, and Jim's got a smile on his face, so I know it's his favorite. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> this is this is my smoker. It's my favorite. Um, it's one that is a little bit more complicated to use because you've got uh, a wood firebox on the side, um, and I can open that up and show you. Uh, it's burning down right now, but again, I use lo uh, logs, uh, apple wood. I've got a friend that has an orchard, so I have access to wood from him. Um, so I use that. You can use chips, and you could use these in any of the smokers, but it's just something that I have access to, and again, it's cost-effective for me to use it. So, Excellent. Um, we so do I, have a question from the audience, and yeah. I think this is a great time to ask it. They're wondering how much do you recommend they spend on an intro smoking piece of equipment? So first time, what's that price range look like? Boy, um, the the, uh, the cabinet smoker would be one, again, it's specifically for smoking, but you could easily use a kettle grill to do that and then just an inexpensive couple pieces of equipment you could add to that and you could start smoking. Get your feet wet, see if you like it, see if you like the flavor, Excellent. and then okay. move on from there because the costs of them are, are varied. Mm -hmm. um, these can be re really expensive. This one's not, um, but it's it, it can be really expensive. Excellent. But you've made some of your own changes to this grill. It looks like we've got some temperature gauges here. Tell us about those. Yep. So the firebox here, and this is a smoke chamber, so this is where the meat sits. Mm -hmm. I've added thermometers. The one that comes with the piece of equipment is up on top, is that's not where the meat sits. The meat sits down at the grate level. So I've put them at different spots, furthest away from the firebox and out through the exhaust chimney. Um, so that I can keep track of what temperature is. Smart move. At, at, yeah, at, at, uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, at different levels, at different areas. Awesome. Well, let's open this up because I'm really interested to see okay. what we've got. Woo! That smells so good. Yep. We're going to have to be eating this later, yeah? <laughs> Get on it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, All right, let's talk before we jump into this product because it looks so good. Um, what's happening beneath the grill grate? So beneath the grill grate, um, I've added some fire brick, and they're ones that normally get used in wood smokers or wood stoves, I'm sorry, wood stoves. Um, I put them down below so that when the, the firebox has um, got heat in it, it'll heat these up. These will hold heat. That, in addition to the water pan that I've got underneath there, it's got water in it, mm -hmm. um, just a foil pan, and both of them will hold heat and radiate out heat so that I don't have the fluctuation of the temperature that slows down the smoking process. So as I'm adding more fuel, and this is starting uh, uh, up and supplying more heat, this helps keep it consistent. Excellent. So 
a big tip from us would be avoid cold weather. It's not as cold as it has been today, but um, it's gonna affect the temperature of your grill. If you're an expert like Jim, you know how to offset that and have the right equipment to do it. But cold weather's probably not your friend, so maybe next spring is the good time to get into this if you haven't already. Okay, now tell me about what we've got on here. I see three different types of meat. Yep, so on the close to me are the ribs, and again, that's one of the competition meats, is uh, rib, pork ribs, and then next to that is chicken thighs. Get right now, they're upside down, because I had tossed, turned them over, mm -hmm. um, putting sauce on them now, and then of course our, our original brat on the far end. Excellent, and these are probably more typical meats that you'd see from somebody who's been smoking for a while. Yep, yeah. and it's also, again, being a KCBS competition meat, you've got to do these two, plus also a pulled pork and then a brisket. Those are the four categories that are you have to do to turn in to be able to compete. Okay, okay. awesome. So, so what, what we started here with these, uh, on the front we would start them up first, and what I kind of coined the phrase of pitmaster treats, pitmaster where treats. as long as you're doing these for a long period of time and they're not ready yet, you could put our brats in the back or other sausages, and then while you're feeding the fire and controlling it, mm -hmm. you also have a chance to eat something. And again, because it's so good, it's it's a treat. So smart. Yep. Yeah. You get to feed yourself while you're getting ready to feed everybody else. How many brats could you fit on this smoker? Um, this I can hold 30 brats at one time, and or or any Ooh, sausage. That's a crowd right there. Yep, exactly. That's like our crowd. Yep. I got they're yeah. they're anxious yep. back yep. there. So that's a great tip if you're cooking other meats that take longer but how long would it normally take to cook these ribs or the chicken yeah the ribs are usually five to six hours five to six uh, hours to, and chicken for a couple hours okay so pitmaster treats are your friend if you're looking to um, eat while smoking longer meat johnsonville brats are great for that mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome well let's pull coal over here again because we definitely again want to get these in front of our um taste testers over there and he's got one final, ooh, I'm gonna take a step back here, one final recipe to share with us, which is kind of a twist on the Pitmaster treat. So Cole, tell us about uh, this recipe. So this is uh, one of Jim's recipes for the Pitmaster treats. He takes one of his brats, he caramelizes some, or he bias slices it, he caramelizes some onions and adds some sauerkraut to saute, and then he uh, puts it on top of the brat and serves it with a pretzel stick. So I'm gonna give that to the judges, but we're also gonna give them sausage from the kettle grill, the cabinet, and the offset smoker. So, Jim so could they can taste so test could... our original brat. That's a great idea. See if there's any difference between um, the actual equipment that you're using um, and, and, our, and our sausage. Yep. Great. So. so you guys have a lot to try right here. We're going to give you some time to do that. Um, while we're waiting, we actually have another question. Let's see. Um, if you, do you use apple, pecan, or maple wood for excellent smoked flavor? Oh, you're using those compliments yep. from yep. the sausage. Yep. Can you tell us actually a little bit about um, the wood chips and different flavors that you might use? Is there a difference? Um, is one better than the other? Would you prefer to use one flavor of wood chip depending on the protein that's on the grill? Uh, it's personal preference. Personal um, preference, okay. For me, again, I'm using apple because of the fact that I've got access to it. Mm -hmm. But um, mesquite and hickory are both highly seasoned, or uh, add a, a lot of smoke flavor, and it'll, it'll highly season the sausage or meat you're going to be cooking with. Um, okay. Apple, maple, and pecan are, are a little bit less. Um, and oak are, add a little bit less flavor and or smoky flavor, and some people don't care for it being over smoke or too smoky. Mm -hmm. um, me, personally, I'm, I'm all for it. I, the more the better. Yep. Excellent. Yep. Now we've had this open for a little while, yep. so we're going to close it. Is there, because? Is, yeah. because? Good, awesome, yeah, awesome cue. <laughs> um, as far as, so one of the barbecue sayings is if you're looking, you're not cooking. If you're looking, you're not, well, mm. we've been cooking here, Yep. but it's time to stop looking. Yep. Um, I'd love for you to go through, we've got a couple other pieces of equipment here that Jim's identified that will help you in your journey to learn how to become a better meat smoker. So, right. so again, I'm using pieces of wood um, that instead of chips so again it just it mm -hmm. creates a fire and the smoke at the same time that makes um, sense we've got a little like wood pit here on the side right um, this is a rib rack again you can put multiple, multiple um, ribs on here and it takes up less space on the grill and you can do more at one time excellent great um, the other is a thermometer with a probe in it again I'd use this if I was using a, a, doing a brisket or pulled pork mm -hmm. where I would put this outside the, the uh, smoke pot and chamber on the end there. Hang over here. Uh, yep, and then this would go into the meat and the cable runs across the back here. Smart. Um, so I, uh, it's one way you can tell the temperature without opening it up. 
Got it. So, Here we go. Looking at cooking. Yep. yep. Use and then your the friendly other, temperature probe. <laughs> right. And this is a piece that goes in the side of the firebox. Again, I can open this up. I can set it right over the top of the direct coals. So I mentioned before that this one and the kettle grill are both dual purpose. You can grill here. I can take everything out of here, put charcoal in here, and also be able to grill on this and or smoke. Very smart. So, and, well, we've and, got two final ingredients right here that I think are extremely interesting. I don't know that you guys can see this, but this bottle right here says apple juice. Is this right. the secret sauce? It's one of the secret <laughs> sauces. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, you can spray it on the, the meats. Um, it, it keeps them moist. Okay. But it also adds a little bit of flavor too. So as it's being smoked, that apple flavor really helps. And people, some people use apple juice. Some people use apple cider vinegar on pork. Some people use a combination. So it's whatever you like, try it. That's so and, smart. And like. I never yeah. would have thought of that. Yeah, and the, better another, than water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, another saying from the uh, from pitmasters and, and barbecue is that um, if you're not burning, you're not learning. So what wonderful. It, what so you means, can't go wrong, right? Yeah. yeah. But as as you cook more and do more, you're going to be able to learn more. Awesome. Yep. If you're yeah. burning, you're not learning. If you're Burn not away. burning, you're not learning. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Another piece uh, that I modified again. Oh, that, yeah. And that's another that's... fun part of barbecue. Um, it took one of the uh, the sm uh, smoke boxes at, mm -hmm. over there, um, and I added some uh, uh, screen to it, and I've got coriander that I put on here. So I can actually smart. put the coriander on here, smoke it, and have smoked coriander. That's so smart. So it's, so it's a way that you can... Uh, Another way to add flavor to your meal. Correct. Fantastic. I definitely want to make sure we can talk about this, and I'm going to let you do the honors. <laughs> okay. Well, it's uh, one of our members has done his uh, it, it created the barbecue sauce. Makes his own barbecue makes sauce. Own, yep. And this is a flavor he's created. Um, it's a little bit it. sweet and a little bit spicy. Um, he refers to it as JR, and I'm not going to give you the details of that. So it'll be something you can name. Ask he and did talk. say it's named after a celebrity, so you can yeah. guess who that is. What's the what is the what's the flavor profile of this? It's, it's a little bit sweet and a little bit uh, spicy. A little bit sweet and a little bit spicy. JR, have fun guessing. Yep, there you go. <laughs> and how could we incorporate this into a meal that might be on the smoker? Um, well, there's a couple different ways. The the uh, chicken thighs have got some of this on it already. Mm -hmm. So again, as you as you uh, cooking, smoking it, then add this on and, and keep caramelizing it. That would be another time to be able to put it over on the uh, over the top of the coals, mm -hmm. caramelize it, and add more flavor. Okay. Um, the other would be is if we take some of the sausage we have, slice it up, and then add this, coat it with them, put it back on the smoker. A lot of people are doing burnt ends, burnt and they're ends. creating their own. It's when the brisket is on and the brisket end is closer to the, to the heat source. The end of it gets a little more burnt and more flavorful too, though. Awesome. Um, so people are, everyone's ordering them now. So one way that these pit masters started doing is taking other parts of the brisket, cutting it up into pieces or cubes, tossing with barbecue sauce, putting back on, and creating more burnt ends. I'm thinking, why not do it with sausage? We awesome. should be able to cut up sausage, toss There's it. There's no put end it back to the on. ideas of what you can do on a exactly. smoker. Yep. I absolutely love that. Be creative and try different things. <laughs> yep. Well, it looks like we have one more question from the audience that we're going to get to uh, from Virginia. She's wondering if we use, do you use regular or light apple juice in our yep. secret sauce? Does it matter? <laughs> it doesn't. No. I mean, I use regular only because, again, Could I Could you use another flavor besides apple juice? Probably. Yeah. Probably. I think I've tried a cherry apple mix at one time. Oh, didn't Didn't get much that. difference in flavor. But, yeah, it depends on, again, how, how much smoke you have on the meat and what the meat base is, too. Awesome. Very cool. Well, let's turn it over to our taste testers. I think they've had plenty of time to get through everything we threw their way a couple of minutes ago. Um, you guys were trying our brat coins, the pitmaster treats that um, Cole turned into a great recipe for us, as you could find on the Johnsonville website. And um, I think you've been taste testing the difference between Johnsonville original brats off of the kettle cabinet and offset smokers. So. I'm curious, is there a difference? Austin. <laughs> yeah, Carly, there absolutely is. Um, not only just in, in the in the flavor profile, but in the coloring as well. When you when you look at it, there's some lighter hints and some darker hints. Um, my my absolute favorite was from the offset grow with the apple juice on top. There's that that smoky yet sweet flavor combination that just is very very craveable. Great stuff. I tend to agree. They were all delicious. Um, from appearance, it's just a little bit different, but the. Uh, but the uh, kettle grill was definitely my favorite. Um, the moistness of the product was just unbelievable. 
Excellent. Mark, anything to add? I mean, we're just happy to be here. Who <laughs> <laughs> um, would but, it be? <laughs> but this, yeah, this was fantastic. I've never had a brat like this before, and I've been from Wisconsin my whole life. So, uh, but the offset one was far and away better than the other two. It was Wonderful. incredible. Well, compliments to the pit master. <laughs> I think Jim has one more tool to show us. This one looks pretty tool. familiar. Absolutely. <laughs> and it means come and get it, right? Come and get it. Awesome. Well, it's time to eat, everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. That's all the time we have today. A big thank you to Jim, Cole, our taste testers, and even bigger thank you to all of you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it. We encourage you to head down to your local retailer, pick up some Johnsonville brats and sausage, and try these techniques at home. Thanks. We'll see you next time.